Some no, things we'll do in this lab is remotely rename this machine to WebNug after we get the web server role installed on it. So this is 192.168.1.101, and it's in the same state as it is when we left our previous lab on installing Windows Server Core. We also have our domain controller here. This is our old GUI Nug machine. I transformed it into a domain controller by adding Active Directory domain services to it, promoting it to a domain controller. So it's hosting the nuggetlab.com domain, and this IP address is 192.168.1.100. So again, our initial task here is to get WebNug ready so it can see our domain controller, and then we will add it to the domain, and then we'll jump over to DC Nug and install a role on it remotely and manage it remotely from both PowerShell and Server Manager. So let's begin here by logging on to our WebNug machine. We'll send a control delete over there, paste the password in, and hit enter. Now I should also mention that DC Nug is also our DNS server. So we're going to need to finish up configuration here on our server core machine before it can even see and join the domain. In fact, just to prove something here, let's go into sconfig and let's attempt to join this machine to the domain. So in sconfig, hit 1 here for domain or workgroup, hit enter, and then hit D for joining a domain. And now we're going to enter the name of the domain, which is nuggetlab.com. We need to specify an authorized domain user, which is going to be the Nugget Lab administrator, the domain administrator account here. So enter that in, and then enter in the password. Hit enter, and look at that. The specified domain either does not exist or could not be contacted. So we can't, even, uh, we can't even join the domain because we can't see our domain controller. Now, we can see it at the IP level, right? We could still ping it, no problem. In fact, if we were to go out here to 15, and we were to ping 192.168.1.100, no problem. We can see it. But if we tried to ping it by its fully qualified domain name, dcnug.nuggetlab.com, and say, no, can't find it. And that's because we don't have DNS appropriately configured on this machine. And that's going to be nine times out of 10 when you're joining a machine to the domain and it doesn't work. Most likely it's DNS related. So let's fix that. First, let's figure out what DNS servers our server core machine is pointed at. Do you remember how to do that? Well, we could do it here in a legacy command prompt by just simply running an IP config. So we could use an old school tool. We could use sconfig, or we could use PowerShell's get net IP configuration. Since we're in the uh, legacy command prompt here, let's just run an IP config with the all switch, just like so. And check it out, right there. We're currently pointed at external DNS servers, Google's DNS servers. So we have no internal DNS name resolution going on. So we're never gonna be able to see our domain controller. Let's fix this using PowerShell here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up PowerShell. Do you remember the PowerShell command line for configuring primary and secondary DNS servers? Remember, it was set DNS client server address. And then we need to pass in either the interface index or the alias, and the alias here is ethernet. We'll just use that. We can also run a get net adapter to get the index and pass that in as well, but this will work just fine. Then we just pass in the server addresses, just like so. We're gonna pass in a common delimited list here, uh, and our primary DNS server is gonna be our local DNS server, so 192.168.1.100, that's DC nug. And then our secondary one will be a Google DNS server so we can get external name resolution going, and that should do the trick. Hit enter, that will set it, and now we can run a get net IP configuration, just to verify here that indeed uh, that commandlet was successful. There it is, DNS server. So our primary DNS server is now our domain controller, so we have local name resolution, and if we ever need to get out to the internet, we now also have external name resolution. Perfect. All right, let's exit out of PowerShell here. So now we're back at the command prompt. Let's try to ping dcnug.nuggetlab.com, and this time it should work. Look at that. So name resolution is working great. Now we're ready to join this machine to the domain. Now there's a few ways that we can add this machine to the domain. We can do it the old school way using the utility known as NetDOM. And there it is, we run a NetDOM, join, pass in the name of the machine. We're using an environment variable, so this will resolve to our local machine name, which is right now Cornub. Pass in the domain that you wanna join, and then a user with privileges to join a machine to the domain. So this needs to be a domain user here, hence the user D and password D. And we're using the domain administrator, which does have privileges. So if we were to hit enter right here, it would join that machine to the domain. We're gonna use PowerShell, however, so let's head down to PowerShell here. And the command that we're looking for is add computer. We can pass in the domain name here, just like so, nuggetlab.com, and that's it. Now, we could also pass in other switches here, like the domain credentials, so we could pass in the administrator name as well as uh, their password. But if we don't pass that in, it will prompt us for it. So let's just do that. I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna say, hey, what's your credentials? So we'll pass in nuggetlab, whack, administrator. And then 
We'll pass in the password. You could also paste that in using the lab controls. There it is. Now we're going to need to restart this machine for it to, uh, to finish the process. So here we could run a restart computer, or we could do this the, uh, the old school way using the shutdown command, passing in the R switch for a restart. We could also pass in the time here. I'm just going to pass in five seconds. Uh, the default there is 30 seconds, so it'll take a while before it actually restarts. And we can even add a comment here, like joined domain, just like so. I'm going to hit enter, and that's going to restart it in about five seconds. And that's that. We are done with local configuration of our server core machine. Now it's time to head over to our DC NUG machine and do some remote management. So let's flip over to DC NUG, paste that password in, and log in. Let's begin by remotely managing our server core machine using graphical utilities like Server Manager. So let's launch Server Manager from the taskbar. And right now, Server Manager on our DC NUG machine here only knows about DC NUG. And we can verify that by choosing all servers in the left hand nav, and that's all we're going to see. So we need to add the servers that we want to remotely manage from Server Manager into Server Manager. And we can do that by dropping down the Manage menu and choosing Add Servers. Now we can browse Active Directory, we can enter in DNS or IP, or we can import it from a file. Let's choose Active Directory and hit Find Now. And there it is, Core Nug, our Server 2016 data center machine. Let's hit over here to add it to the selected machines and hit OK. And now that's going to add it into Server Manager. As soon as it's ready, we'll get its IP address, its manageability. And now we can start managing it here from Server Manager. And what's really cool about this is this left-hand nav knows what roles and features are installed on all the machines that we add in here. So if we wanted to scale this down just to see our domain controllers, we can choose Active Directory Domain Services. We can right-click, and we'll get context-sensitive tools for that machine. So we can launch these tools right in to that machine. Now, only, Core Nug does not have Active Directory Domain Services. That's why it does not show up in this list. Same with DNS. Only DC Nug does. But File and Storage Services comes by default on all of our installations. So check it out. We get both machines in here. And once we install IIS, we'll get another uh, item over here in the left-hand nav that says IIS. We choose that. We'll only see Core Nug in that list. Another thing that's really nice here, I'm going to go back to all servers, is when you choose a machine, you get all this information about that machine. So you can see the services that are running, the event viewer, and uh, some other good information down there. But notice on our Core Nug machine, look at that, we have an error in the event log for net join. That was our failed attempt at joining our Core Nug machine to the domain. So nice consolidated view of everything that's going on in that machine here in Server Manager. Another thing that's really nice is if you just want to quickly get into a PowerShell session on a remote machine, you can right click on it and choose Windows PowerShell. This is going to enter in to a remote PowerShell session. And look at that, we are on that machine in PowerShell. So if I were to type in a host name, look at that, it's going to return Cornug. We do an IP config, look at that, that's Cornug's IP configuration. So just a nice, quick, easy way to get into a remote session on that machine using PowerShell. Now we can also install roles and features remotely using the GUI. If we drop down the Manage menu and choose Add Roles and Features, and hit this wizard a few times until we get to Server Selection, we will have all of those servers that we added into Server Manager listed here. Now we can target Cornug, and you'll see your destination server up here in the upper right. So if we hit Next, now anything that we choose for server roles, role services, and features will go on to that machine. Pretty cool. So if we wanted to install uh, the web server role, we could just check it, hit Next, Next, Finish, and it will do its thing. The only downside to doing this, though, is you can only target one machine at a time, unlike PowerShell, where we can target many machines. So if we're bringing up a farm of web servers, we could hit them all in one shot. Now, let's cancel out of the wizard here and actually do this using PowerShell. So let's hit Cancel. Let's minimize Server Manager. Now, rather than use the shell this time, we're going to use the integrated scripting environment. I have a file full of PowerShell commands that we'll walk through. But just to show you here on Server 2016, the full desktop experience, you can hit the Start button to launch the shell or the ISC. Let's open up File Explorer here so I can show you where this is located. Head to this PC, head into the C drive, and in the root of the C drive, we have a Nugget Lab directory. In there, we have pscommands.ps1. So I'm going to give that a right click and choose Edit. It's going to launch that script into the integrated scripting environment. And here it is. Our very first line of code here, we'll use the enter ps session commandlet to enter session on the remote machine. This is the exact same thing that we just did back in Server Manager when we right-clicked on Cornub and we chose Windows PowerShell. Same exact thing, this time we're just doing it purely using PowerShell. So make sure your cursor is on that line, or you can click in the white space here to highlight the entire line. No matter uh, which one you choose there, this button right here will run your selection, F8. So this will just simply run the line of code that your cursor 
is on. The button to the left of that will run the entire script. We're gonna run through this line by line though, so make sure your cursor is on that line and hit run selection or F8 on your keyboard, and that will enter us in to a remote section on our Core Nug machine. And there it is, check it out. We are on Core Nug. Now get familiar with Control R when you're in the ISC here, because that'll switch you back between the results pane and the script pane. If you want to go split screen, you can choose the first button here in this section, which will go half and half. So now we can see both our code and our results. So now that we're on Cornug, let's place our cursor in the next line of code, and we're going to run Get Windows Feature. This will get us all the role, role services, and features on Cornug that are available to install on Cornug, either installed or not installed. And I should point out here that PowerShell doesn't distinguish between roles, role services, and features. Everything is just a feature with sub-features if there's a role service underneath it or a feature with sub-features underneath it. So place your cursor on that line, hit Run Selection again, and it's going to run Get Windows Feature against our Core Nug machine. And again, return a list of all available features on that machine. Now, we're only interested in IIS, the web server role. So we could go hunting through this list, but we could tighten up our command here. We could add the name parameter and then type in web with the splat or wildcard character here. And this will just get us all those roles that have web. And, and this, by the way, uses the second column in the results, the second property as we call that, from the object that's returned from get windows feature, and that is name. Think of this as kind of the system name. But when we ran that, now we only get web server related roles and features. And there's the one we want, and there's a the system name we will use, web server. Now, something else really neat that we can do here, I'm going to jump down to line number 12, is pipe the results of that get windows feature commandlet to the where object. This is a generic commandlet that we can use for virtually any commandlet here in PowerShell to filter on top of it. So in this case, we're going to run a get windows feature, pipe all of those results to the where object, and then query the installed property where it's equal to true. If we run this line of code, it's only going to return anything that is installed over on Corna. So file and storage services, the .NET framework, Windows Defender, Windows PowerShell. Notice that we're missing IIS because we haven't installed it yet. So once we get it installed, we will run this again and we should see IIS inside of here. All right, let's go back a line here to install Windows feature. This is the command that you need to get familiar with because this is how we remotely install or even locally install features here in Windows Server. We need to pass in that system name to this and we can pass multiple ones in here and it will install them all in one shot. Now notice, not only do I have web server, but I also am installing the web management service. If we go back to get Windows feature here and run it, just for anything that starts with web, here at the bottom here, see this management service? We need this if we want to remotely manage IIS using IIS Manager, the graphical utility. Also notice something here. Do you see the IIS management console in this list under management tools? No, because it's a server core machine, we're not going to have the ability to install any graphical utilities on that machine. That's why it's not in this list. And by the way, a couple of handy parameters here for install Windows feature. I'm going to hit a space and a dash, and that'll pop up in IntelliSense, show us all the available parameters for this commandlet, is include all sub-features. So if you were to install a, a parent feature, or a role here, and then include this parameter, it will install everything underneath it. And also include management tools will include the uh, associated management tool features with that role. We're good with what we've got here, so I'm going to back out of this. Make sure your cursor is on this line. Let's hit execute, and that's going to install the web server role, IS, as well as that management service over on our core nug machine. A minute or so later, and it's done. Now we can re-execute this line of code, and we should see just our installed features, and look at that. We have now installed IIS as well as these management tools. Now let's test out the IIS portion of that installation. Our default website should be up and running. So let's open up Internet Explorer and let's browse over to Cornub. And look at that, it is served up from our remote web server, awesome. Now let's configure remote management. That way we can use the IIS management console here on our local machine to remotely manage IIS over on our Cornub machine. See this button on the toolbar right here? This will launch a brand new PowerShell session here in the shell. Now remember, this is on DC Nub, our local machine. So we need to install the IIS management console on this machine. Now let's start by getting the system name of that management console. Let's run a get Windows feature and let's just pass in here web asterisk. There it is, underneath management tools, IIS management console, web-mgmt-console. This 
is the item that was not returned when we ran this same exact command over here on Cornhub, because again, that is a graphical utility. So now if we run an install Windows feature and pass in web-mgmt-console, that's going to install the graphical utility here on our local DC Nug machine. And that is all set. Let's close out of the shell here. Let's head back to Server Manager just for a second. Number one, I want to point out that we now have IIS over here with Cornug in it. If we drop down the Tools menu now, we should see Internet Information Services Manager. Now, this isn't going to work quite yet because we still need to configure the management service. But just to show you the problem that we need to fix here, if we right-click on Start Page, you can also drop down this button here and choose Connect to a Server and type in Cornug and choose Next. Add some credentials in here and choose Next going to say, nope, can't do it, and it, unable to connect to the remote server. That's because we're not quite done with configuration. So we'll come back to this here shortly. Let's head back to the ISE. So there's just a few things we need to do to get that working. We need to configure remote management in the registry for IIS. So it lives under this path. There is the key, and we need to switch it to one. We also need to start the service. And what we're going to do, since we need to rename this machine from Cornug to WebNug, we're just going to set the service, and here is the service name, by the way, WMSVC, startup type to automatic. That way, when we rename the computer and reboot it, it will automatically start when it comes up. Let's actually do both of these in one shot. So let's highlight both lines of code. That'll flip the registry switch there for enable remote management and set the web management services startup type automatic. All right, so with both those highlighted, we'll run the selection here, and we're done. The last thing we need to do here is rename the computer from Cornug to WebNug. So we'll use the rename computer commandlet, pass in WebNug, specify our domain credential here. Of course, it will bypass any user confirmations, and the restart switch will restart it automatically. So I'm going to highlight that line of code, run our selection. It's going to prompt us for the Nugget Lab administrator's password here, so I'll just type that in, hit OK, and now it's going to rename it and restart it. Now, that's also going to terminate our remote session. If you just wanted to exit a session on a live computer, then you could run the exit PS session command. This will actually bomb out on us because it's not going to be able to find that remote session since it's rebooting. And there it is. And now we're back on DC Nug. So WebNug should be back online by now. The next thing we're going to look at here is invoke command. So enter PS session and invoke command are going to be two of your go-to commandlets for remote management. The big difference between them is that enter PS session physically gets us onto a remote session. We're on that machine entering PowerShell commands. Invoke command just simply sends the command over to that machine. So we're not going to be on a remote session, just going to send it over and give us the results. And the cool thing about invoke command is we can actually pass in multiple machine names, and it'll fire that command asynchronously over to all of those machines in one shot. Now, we only have one machine here, so let's just run an invoke command pointing at WebNug. And then in the script block, this is the command that will actually get executed on this machine. We're going to run a get service, which will get us the status of W3SVC, which is IIS, and WMSVC, which is the remote management service that we just installed and configured. So I'm going to run this selection. It's going to fire that command over to WebNug, and we should get two results here. And there it is. And now, look, our WM service is now in a running state. If you were to run that prior, to us setting the start type, it would currently be stopped. Another thing I want to mention here, if we scroll down a little bit, is this get service commandlet. So a lot of the core commandlets here for managing uh, servers have this computer name parameter on them. The get service and get process and get event log, all of those use DCOM, which is an old Windows RPC technology that requires you punch holes in the firewall for them to work. Now, this will work for us right now because we disabled the firewall on our server core machine. And just to prove that, if we execute that line of code at work, that uses DCOM. PowerShell remoting, which is enter PS session and invoke command, uses HTTP, which is firewall friendly. So make sure you use invoke command whenever sending PowerShell commands over the wire to a remote machine because it'll work out of the box. Now let's run our final test. Let's bring IIS Manager back up and let's see if we can manage the websites using IIS Manager on that WebNug machine. So drop down connections once again, choose connect to a server. This time, the name of our server is web-nug. Choose next, type in some credentials here, administrator with our lab password. Hit next. Yes, this is a good sign. Ignore the certificate warning here, hit connect. And if all is well, it's gonna prompt us here for the name that we wanna reference it here for that connection. WebNug is good, we'll hit finish. And there it is, now we can remotely manage 
our server core web server. In fact, if we expand this, expand sites, there's the default website. If we head down here to content view, there is the actual content. Another thing you can do is graphically manage the file system on a server core machine. If I bring File Explorer back up here, and we go into the address bar and do a backslash backslash web dash nug backslash c dollar, we're going through the administrative share here, there's the file system. There's IIS, here's our default website, and there is our web.